Okay, just kind of waiting to make sure everything is set up properly. That the camera is in focus. And that my audio is working good. Awesome. So I am going to paint some Saturday morning cartoon characters today. I thought it'd be fun to do a live video um, to show you guys uh, my technique and how fast it, you can paint some figures. So I just grabbed these two figures and I thought, okay, what the heck? This is a great, great opportunity to showcase the figures. I apologize if they're going in and out of focus. I'll try to adjust that. Uh, this is all of a, a nice little project that I did, and uh, it's pretty. It's been pretty successful. So, so let's look at this figure here. The his uh, clothing. I almost said his uniform. <laughs> his clothing is uh, going to be like a, a black pullover, black almost turtleneck, and blue jeans, white shoes. And this character here uh, is going to be uh, different, like a, 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 a tan, yellow tan color for the main clothes. I'm going to use the same color, but then just do a highlight more on the top versus the pants. Uh, for these, I'm going to be using some contrast paints show you how I use contrast paints and uh, how quickly you can get some paint on so I'm gonna start off let's let's let gravity do its job here to make it easier for us so I'm gonna start with his black turtleneck first and what I'm gonna do is grab some contrast black Templar and I'm going to get my trusty brush out I use a simple round, eight round craft brush that you can get at Hobby Lobby. So I'm going to get my mixture here of the contrast paint. And then I'm going to get Vallejo Black. drop of glaze medium to dilute that a little bit and then mix it up okay so here we go this is a challenge <laughs> because I've got a camera in front of me and tons of lights I'm trying to make sure that uh, you can see the figure but also I'm trying to make sure that I can see the figure when I'm painting and I'm also painting with these those great new uh, magnifying goggles or glasses that uh, then making the the waves on Facebook they're like $12 on Amazon I highly recommend them they come with like four or five different lenses of magnification so it's not it's not like a, an old uh, optivisor that I think a lot of us have from back in the day uh, it's not a fixed magnification you can change the, the lenses and I apologize if you hear my Facebook going off that will happen that happens a lot <laughs> okay let's see here getting this black mixture on
get it around the neck. Looking good. Now David was so kind to make cards, league cards for Pope Alley for these figures. So you can use them for Pope Alley. Okay, I think I got everything here. Nope. Okay. Nice. Okay, well now let's work on the pants real quick. The blue jeans. And for that, I'm going to make a mixture of contrast Leviathan Blue and Game Color Imperial Blue. I put some contrast Leviathan Blue on my trusty wet palette. Imperial Blue. it up. Got a nice shade of the imperial blue and with the contrast mix it acts as a nice it adds a nice flow to the paint. Okay. So here we go. Now his shoes, tennis shoes are white. So I want to be careful to not get a whole bunch of that blue on there just to save me time. I mean, it's not the end of the world if the blue gets on the shoes, but... It's going on rather nice. Now, I've pre-shaded these figures using uh, basically the Zenithal highlighting technique. Uh, but I've introduced lots of browns and blues and stuff like that to create pre-shading. So that saves me time. And that's why I like the paint to be thin. Because it just flows, it doesn't cover everything. It, it just in great, like in great detail, it just doesn't cover it. I have opportunities to uh, recover from a deeper wash, and also not lose detail, as well as can still take advantage of the highlights that I've done. So with contrast paints. I see a lot of people just throw the paint on and they're good to go. Well, that's fine. But contrast paint can also do that coffee staining and pooling. So I like if, you know, if I see that, I like to move the paint around. Okay. So we're good. Not black. Black is a pain in the butt to paint can be. So this paint, the, 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 the turtleneck is still wet. And because I have my wet palette, the paint, the base color that I've used is still wet. So I'm going to start working on highlights. So what I do is I put a regular black color back into the mix of my original one. And I add Trusty Glaze Medium. 
my brush go? Mix that up. Okay. So now I'm going to start working on the highlights. So I'm just taking my brush and going over the areas where the raised edges are. You can see the light hitting across the back. I tell you what, painting these <laughs> right now so nice for me I have no uniforms no camouflage to paint oh god okay so again the paint is still wet so I have black there so what am I gonna do to start working up on the highlights I'm gonna grab trusty Panzer Ace is dark rubber, which is a nice grayish black. Or black gray, however you want to say it. So I will put that there. Oops, my apologies, I bumped the camera. you can see hopefully that uh, that the gray is definitely starting to highlight okay now if you guys are interested in these figures Please send me a PM. My name is Tim Spakowski. And I can send them to you. Starting to work on the highlights here really good. Taking advantage of the paint being wet still, which is a huge plus for us. As well as taking advantage of the wet palette because the paint is all wet. It's not drying. So it allows so much greater flexibility for us. If I needed to, I could leave my studio, you know, put the cover on here and leave my studio and come back several hours or days and that paint will still be wet okay so i'm looking for the glory shots here is where is the action where is the light going to be hitting him where is it going to be coming across so that's where i'm accentuating the grays. What I'm going to try to do here is zoom the camera in a little bit more. Let's see if that's possible. I really bumped that camera. I apologize. I'm trying to. There we go. I think that's better. Okay. Making videos like this is quite a challenge. It's a learning curve of cameras and light and preparation. Because the whole point of this is to teach people how to paint. 
you know, to hi oh, highlight your your figures, show people what it what they look like, but also teach them how to paint the damn figures. Let's see here. I'm going to start. I need to work on a highlight now. It's taking a little bit longer. I'm going to introduce Viejo Basalt Gray to the mix. I'm going to shake it up real quick. I don't like just adding the paint right into the, the, the base coat. Most of the time I don't, especially the highlights, because I, I want the ability to recover if it's if there's an accident, if, if it's too light. So that's why a lot of times on my palette I will drag that paint further down. So applying the highlights. I also advise guys to really know what their paints can do. Know your paint technology. Know what it's going to look like when it's dry. Because while the paint is wet, you're like, oh my god, this doesn't look that good. And for this demonstration, this is more of a speed painting. Um, and with black, what's great, or really with any color, if there's too much of a transition, you can always tone it down with, with shades or glazes. And the other great thing about having the wet palette is when this dries, this gray is going to really be prominent. So we'll have the original black color that I can thin even more down and then just glaze over it. See, that's a little too much for me. And also, it provides us with the paint being wet, literally, it provides us the ability to do wet blending on the fly. I used to, when I painted, well, my, my painting style has changed over the years, I'm sure like most people. Um, I used to paint the base coat, let it dry, and start painting first highlight, let it dry. And uh, I learned that it takes me a long time to paint figures so I need to get stuff painted fast and to look good for the table I just turned 46 uh, Wednesday and uh, I'm sure like you guys I have a lot of figures to paint before I uh, pass so <laughs> I need to figure out a way to, to paint figures a lot quicker and so I had to change up my style I'd say that right well for the last couple years the main influencer of my style is James Wapple uh, I am I follow him on patreon I support him his patreon page uh, I also sell his videos his painting videos and I can tell you my it because of him my painting has gotten better and I'm able to come out with a lot quicker figures painted. Okay, here we go. You know what? I'm going to say this is done. The shirt at least. <laughs> now on to the jeans.
Okay, I'm going to go back to the Imperial Blue and make a drop right into, well, on the side at least, of our base. Glaze Medium. I use Glaze Medium because, um, well, it thins the paint and you makes it so that it's nice translucent layers. Okay, let's just start working on the highlights real quick. And also, because of the contrast paint and the pre-shading, the Xenothal highlighting or whatever, Xenothal shading, there's highlights already created here. You can see the, the top of the quads. Um, so I'm not really going to put a lot of paint in there. I it's that that's already been created. I don't really need to to add it again. I may add some highlights to it, more highlights just to accentuate it, but I really don't need to to do more. Top of his leg, I will definitely just bring that down. Okay, sweet. So I'm going to do another drop of Imperial Blue. A couple drops of Glaze Medium. Now, I, it's funny, I cannot through my distributor get this big size Glaze Medium bottle. I can only get dropper size glaze medium bottles. I don't know why my distributor doesn't have these. So I highly recommend picking these up on Amazon. I think I got this Prime for like $8. And it's three or four times the amount, the size of this. So this is a, it definitely saves you money. And if you use a lot of it, like I do, just buy the bigger one. Okay, here, here we go. Some more highlights. Okay, so now I want to start building up the highlight. And I'm going to take... I love Vallejo Game Color because it's already thin. It's thinner paint. Um, so I'm going to take Magic Blue and add some drops to Magic Blue of Magic Blue to the color that we've been adding or been working on. And people may look at my palette and say, my God, Tim, you've got a lot of paint on there. It's a waste. Well, you know, I, paint's cheap. It's not a waste. It's just... Okay. Again, I'm just really hitting the light, the areas where the light would be hitting the most. We'll do some mid-tones to um, break up that jump between the base layer, base color of the blue. Uh, we'll add some gray to the to the base color and create some mid-tones. I hope you guys can see this. Okay, looking good. Now, I don't, I really do not like using a pure white for, for my final highlights. Like I said, this is just a, a quick uh, uh, 
this is just a quick painting demo. Um, so I could add more transitions and more layers and stuff. Um, instead of a, of a cream, of a, of a white that I'm going to add, I'm going to add, this is Maiden Flesh. This is Reaper's Maiden Flesh. And I'm going to add this to the mix. Just a drop. Not too much. I don't want a huge jump here. And this is when your glaze medium is your friend because you're going to be thinning out that paint even more. So you're not just going to have a bam, a quick transition. And these are what I would call like the, the, the final highlights for the blue. So it's, I'm not going to do a lot here. I'm just going to just going to do some dots really just creating a hint of light i i don't know about you guys but for me blue can be a challenge to paint uh getting a nice denim look for jeans or whatever because a lot of times i go too bright and then I just lose that that look. Okay. Cool. So what I'm going to do while this blue is still wet, I am going to use I'm going to do some mid tones. And I think what I'm going to do is so I have some sort of tying in with the, the the shirt I'm going to add some of that same gray that I use for the highlight to create a mid-tone so mid-tones are the shade between the light and the dark it's not a dark shade not a final shade but it's it it will take care of the color of where the highlight and the, the shades meet if that even makes any sense at all Let's see, how does he look? Okay, what I am going to do is this quad right here is bothering me the way it looks. So I'm going to try to do some wet blending. There, beautiful. This, you know, the way I'm painting this figure is not going to win competitions it's not purpose of competition painting um, however it's about creating a very nice technique and, and painting a very nice figure that I would say is definitely over just pe pe people's typical tabletop standard but it is a medium is a middle ground for me mentally so that I can I can actually get some stuff painted okay right now I'm gonna say he's done as far as the clothing goes um, I am going to put him down and let him dry and then I'm going to work on his companion so my painting desk here is getting crowded what am I going to do this is actually going to be a very easy figure to paint because I'm going to do some cheating at first and how am I going to do that I'm going to take Panzerace's old wood. Contrast skeleton horde. You know what? I knew that I should have had I should have put more paper down on my palette because 
I might be running out of room here. Hopefully that's not the case, since this is a live video. <laughs> okay, so skeletons and horde. I'm gonna do a nice drop or two of Panzer Ace's old wood. If you guys don't have that color, I highly recommend that color. It's a great color. It's you can use it for well old wood. <laughs> you could use it for khakis. Um, I use it for multicam at times, multicam camouflage. It's just a great color. Okay, so let's let's see this thin test here. Let's. Not good. Okay, so other than his turban, I'm going to just wash the entire figure, including the flesh, with this. Now, again, this was pre-shaded using Xenophil highlights and shading. So we're going to be taking advantage right off the bat of that, uh, the shades and the highlights that I've done. So I'm literally just moving this whole mixture. And for this exercise, I'm going to make the top lighter than the pants. So we're going to st we're still working with the same color. Uh, you know what? The shoes are going to be brown, a darker brown, but you know what? What the hell? We'll just put that on there. Okay, I'm hoping you guys can see how the pre-shading is actually coming through already. So you're seeing darks and you're seeing lights, which again, saves time. Okay, now the paint's, the paint is wet. Let's start going right into our highlights. So I'm gonna go back to the old wood, put a drop in there, So I'm just going to start putting paint down on areas that uh, need highlighting. So I'm going to do it on the pants as well. I'm just going to do the whole figure. And I'm going to an experiment here with the face. God, that's a good looking face. So I'm just going to start doing the highlights of the face. And I might just take care of that, his flesh tone, with a nice brown wash that would go over the highlights. See how fast? I'm not, I am not going really slow and very careful. I'm using a cheap 40 cent craft brush. I'm working fast. This is about establishing the base coat. Not about perfection right now. Okay, I'm going to add another drop of the old wood. And every time I'm going to drop at least one or two drops of the glazed medium. Because what I'm trying to do is create trans translucent layers that we're going to be building upon, but not covering up what I've done already. funny it's like I see that just a tiny little hair on his hand I'm like how the hell does that happen I 
I mean, guys, look, guys who are painting up khaki uniforms right now for, uh, you know, say Desert, uh, desert Rats or, uh, or any type of uniform that's got a lot of khaki in it, look how fast this is. The time saver. And it may look like a mess to you because of the paint being all wet and stuff, but when it dries, it's, it's completely different. Okay, so I am looking, I'm off camera right now, and I'm looking for some transitioning colors. And a quick transition color for me, really jump, of the, will this be a Vallejo Iraqi sand? So I'm just going to add a little drop at first. I'm not going to go a lot. Okay. Sometimes I honestly think I need a bigger palette. Okay, here we go. It's, I didn't add any, uh, any uh, glaze medium because I didn't know... Well, I didn't know what it was going to look like. So... So it's a slow, it's a small transition. It's not a big, huge jump. And that's fine. That's what I prefer. Because I hate huge transitions. It freaks my eye out and I panic at times. Like, oh my god, what did I just do? So I'd rather just work in smaller transitions than huge jumps. It helps my morale when I'm painting. I have no surprises. Okay, so definitely he is coming along. And the pre-shading is just coming out. It's just the translucency of it is just coming out. The work's already being done for us. I had another drop of Iraqi sand, and now I'm going to start working up the highlights more, even more. Now, I said before that the pants and the, and the top are the same color. But at some point, I'm going to stop highlighting the the pants and just work more on the highlights of the, the shirt. And then to take care of that even more, to tone it down even more, we'll use shades and glazes to create a different look, different appearance. Wow, that face, yeah, that is a really good looking face, my god, Stavros sculpted these, and he did an amazing job. Again, I'm just hitting highlights here, hitting where the light is hitting the most. Let's see if I can get around the top of the shoulder. Oop, that was a little too much. So I took a little too much there, so I will take my handy dandy white makeup sponge and just barely. There we go. Beautiful. Makeup sponges, guys. Buy them. They're perfect for for little happy accidents. Okay. One more with the Reki Sand. This will be my last highlight for the, the pants. And then guys may be watching this go, oh, you, you need to add more. No, I don't. Not for this. 
Not for this video. I think a lot of guys are intimidated by the, the master and the professional figure painters that are definitely more prevalent now on the internet. And, uh, you know, they see their art and their beauty, and then they look at their figures to go, oh, I just give up. Um, I, th I think in the end, it's about making and deciding on a style that you, as a hobbyist, as a gamer, like, and it, what accomplishes what you are trying to do. Are you painting for photographs? Are you painting to win competitions? Um, or are you painting to get figures on the table quickly? With, you know, several different layers of, you know, of highlights and shades and stuff like that. So, don't give up. Believe me, I've been there. And I'm still there. God, I see some of this art that people are doing. I just like, oh my God. Okay, so I'm done with the pants. I am going to now start adding even more highlights and uh, to the top. And I'm going to use Vallejo Dark Sand. So it's a cream color with a little bit of yellow in it. Let's see what that looks like now. Yeah, that's... Definitely different. And another glaze medium here. Okay. And I'm gonna. There, that's perfect. Perfect. Now, this may look too bright. And that's okay, because when I use the, the glazes for shading, it will tone that down. So I do prefer painting a little bit lighter. Because I know what the shades the shading is going to do. Okay, let's see here. To save me some time, I'm going to grab pale sand. I'm going to drop that in. Woo, that was a mistake. Okay, well, let's see here. What is this going to look like? Let's see, here we go. Good. Going across again. Uh, for you, I, I live in St. Louis, so for you guys, uh, I hope this. I hope that a lot of you guys in this group are going to go to recruits in September. I will be there. I'm going to have a table next to Wiley Games, which I'm very excited about. Jay Wiley is a really great guy, and I hope I see David there, David Phipps. I would love to see Fenton come to uh, recruits. I know it's a bit of a, a flight to him or for him, but it would be great. Okay. 
I'm just going to skip a lot of steps here. Add some of that pale sand. So we got a nice cream color. Painting the edge of where the light's hitting the most. Also still working on this face. Again, this is going to be an experiment with the face. So if it fails, it fails. But just the face alone looks good with the tan. Oh, I need to get some... The other thing that James Wapple talks about is he says if color goes one place, it's got to go somewhere else. I like that because it really ties in a lot of the figure. So with that being said, I'm going to take this pale sand and use it as a base for the turban. And it's thin so that the pre-shading is going to be coming up and you'll see it's, it's because the paint's translucent, it's going to show right through. See, a time saver there. I didn't have to stop but get different paint. just there and I'm really not going to worry about shading this right now in fact I'm going to go straight into highlighting it uh, let's see quick highlight I'm going to use game color off-white great color I highly recommend this color Okay, got that mix going here. Sandy, check on my finger, make sure that it's nice. Okay, so now I'm just going to hit the highlights. There you go. And you know what? It's because I've got this color out, I'm going to add even more of a highlight just around the edge. That's the other thing. What happens to me, and I don't know about you guys, but as I'm painting, I get ideas what to do with color that I'm that's on my brush. So I just like, okay. Let's go with that. I used to be so very rigid in my painting. My God, draconian. It has to be right. This has to be smooth. This has to... And you know how many figures I didn't get painted because of that? <laughs> Just worried too much about what people would say or think and all that sort of crap. Quite a difference in 
color. Okay. Hopefully you can see that it's, that it's coming through. Okay, turbine is coming through really good. Now I want to make a statement here with the top of the highlights of this turban. So I'm going dead white. This is a great color. And I don't I'm not I don't use it that much. I just in this case I'm going to be blending it in with the rest of this color and then just dragging it atop the very raised areas. Okay. Okay, a couple of things real quick. Shoes and buttons. And I have a sword. So I'm going to cover this up right now. I have a lot of these plastic trays that happen to be from coleslaw or whatever. So because I've run out of space on my palette, um, and because this is just a quick demo, I'm just going to go in and apply paint for the buttons and the shoes. Just right on here. Save me time. Buttons may need to be a darker brown to stand out, so that's okay. Or even black. Yep, I think I'm just going to do that. My Normally my go-to black color, which I recommend highly is scale 75 flat black um, but to save time I am just using the Vallejo black that's on my table right now okay now I've got a sword Let's see, what am I going to use for his sword? Let's start off with Vallejo Model Air Gun. These Model Air paints are really good. They're nice and thin. Um, <laughs> it's funny, they're for, for airbrushing. Airbrushing metallics is a pain in the butt. Uh, and I still have issues with it. 
but as far as for brush painting they're great because they're nice and, and thin I'll get a nice gold for the hilt, but I just want to get some paint on. Okay. Now see the difference between the top and the bottom? It's the same color that we used. I just at some point stopped using highlights. And it's going to be even darker when I use washes for glazes. Um, for the hilt, as my brush is in my mouth, I'm just going to use Japan Uniform. Or the handle, whatever. I use Japan, Vallejo Japan uniform a lot, uh, well, for my Japanese, but it's also a great non-metallic gold color, and I will also use that on um, the other figure's hair. It's a good, it's a good base for it. Okay, he's pretty much done as far as painting. Um, I want to put him aside. Uh, well, not base painting, the base coats painting. We still have shading and stuff to do. But we're going to put him aside. Okay, so. We don't have much to do on this figure, thank God. So you guys can go back to your day. Um, okay, he's blonde. And since I've got that Japanese uniform color already on the, the palette over here, I'm going to add some... Glaze medium, glaze it down, and then I'm going to start working on his flesh. Again, I'm just working with what's on my palette, just to save time. Because this is, again, is a great unif uh, This is a great color for establishing or painting like base coats of blonde. So this is not the only color I will use for his hair, but it's a good start. Okay, perfect. Time to get into the flesh. Okay, here we go, kids. I'm going to start with... Game color, Carne Maroon Tan. Put this right here. Oop, needs to be shaken up a little bit. Okay. Right there. Bam. Let's work on the hands. go in here and I you know I'm, I can definitely see I've gone into some of the hair with this because of the size brush that I'm using and the speed of which I'm going and that's okay it's easily corrected no need to panic
awesome. One more hand. Okay, so I've got, got the flesh, the base part of the flesh. Now what I have left to do, the sneakers. Now, I am going to use Vallejo Rotten White. This is a very nice, almost like electric white color. The lights messed up here. Getting around his sneakers. Well, I breathed, <laughs> and uh, paint went across the lap, or his chin here, so how do I recover from that? Take my brush, get it wet. I've created a highlight. Now, when I do shading, I can recover from that, no problem. But I also have the, the regular paint that's below, and I may just... a drop on there just to recover from that I did that because I'm moving too fast okay done so now I what I do for this figure as well as this figure I need to apply some shades to it some brown shades first um, so then I will build up my flesh color on his face and then I'll put the same brown on the on the sword. I may do a very thin layer over his, his turban, but definitely on his shoes. Um, so to do that, I'm going to create a wash real quick. Oh, but you know what? I need to put you on mute real, real quick because I have to use my trusty $10 hair dryer. Okay, I am back. So these are dry. Now I'm going to make a nice thin wash uh, of brown, of a very, very, very dark brown. I'm just going to find it here. And this is Vallejo Cam Black Brown. Now off camera, I guess I could do it on camera. I'll just move the... I am looking for another plastic tray here. Move this real quick. Also, again, I, I keep everything as far as these plastic blisters go. They're great for washes. So I'm just going to put drop there. Not much at all. And I have uh, water here. I'm going to put mm, eight. I'll put six. Let's see what it looks like. Uh, 
Let's see here. What is this? Perfect. Oh, you know what? Nope. Okay. So let's look at this figure. Get a lot of the paint off my brush. And I'm applying this on his face. And I'm creating a quick shade. And I'll put it around the shoes to create some shades. Not a lot. And I might just put some brown here on his blue jeans. Okay, see this pooling up here? Just kind of move it around. But right away, what's happened is I've created some definition with that shade. Which is what I want. Okay. Let's do sword. This is going to be a test on the hands. What does this look like here? Right now, I'm not trying to really sh uh, glaze the face as far as a final color. What I'm trying to do, though, is get some detail to show up. So, put it in there. And now, since that paint is still wet on my brush, I'm going to start kind of like a pin washing of the turban. And creating some shadow not a lot because I don't want to lose the highlights and all that work that I've just done okay so you've created shadow really quick Creating shadow on the blade. Okay. Take another quick look here. Sometimes I go back if I want some more areas prominent. Okay, go over the sneakers again. Not really wanting to make the sneakers brown, but just bring up some detail around his shoelaces and stuff. Okay, I'm going to put you on mute real quick. Use my hair dryer. Okay, we're back. So now that the figure's dry, I'm going to go and start on his flesh. Going back to my tray here. 
I'm adding glaze medium. And I'm going to go back over the areas that I think need to be highlighted. Bridge of the nose, top of the cheeks, just a little area of the forehead. Chin. Fingers. Like so. Okay. Perfect. Damn, that face looks good. Sculpted, at least. Good. <laughs> okay, so now I'm going to start building on that flesh. And to make it easy for us in this video, I'm going to just grab my flesh colors that I use. Okay. Pushing stuff aside, it's getting crowded. Vallejo Game Color Dwarf Flesh. I will put a drop of that. In the mix, I might have to change out bottles. There we go. A couple drops of glaze medium. So I'm starting to slowly build that flesh. And I'm putting that color on the cheeks. Top of the ear. Right there. Top of the hand. There's the fingers. Next color, model color flat flesh. This is the recipe that I, I use most of the time for all my flushes. I might, for if I'm doing, if I'm painting for photographs to to show off figures for my store, then I will, you know, definitely add some more tones and all that sort of stuff. But this is it. If if I, if I was paying for war game figures, this is this is my recipe. So, in this case, I am dropping the the flesh colors into the to the base colors because I want it all to to blend and come from each other. Okay, so I'm slowing down a little bit here. Okay, just going a little bit slower, controlling my breathing. Okay. Uh, and then I'm going to go to basic skin tone. 
put that drop right into there. I would consider this final highlight. Maybe, maybe not. I don't. Slowing down my painting. dry real quick. I'm going to go back to the hair. I may do an, another highlight of the flesh. I'm just wanting it to, to dry a little bit. Okay, let's start working on the hair. I'm going back to that same color. I went straight from the palette. And again, we're, we are going over the area that uh, you know af after that brown wash was done okay let's see here what do I have on my desk that I can use for quick highlight Oh, here we are. Here we are. Here we are. Here we are. Dead flesh. I'm going to drop that right into here. It's in the mixture. It's definitely a highlight. Okay, here we go. So I'll start working on the areas where the light's hitting the most. And in this case, I'm not worried about mid-tones or, or deeper shades because that's going to be taken care of when we do some glazes. I'm tricking the eye and creating some hard edge shading here, or highlighting. Okay, one more. One of my favorite colors for highlighting is ice yellow. I use that in a lot of cases, but it will work definitely for this. I think if somebody was down here right now seeing, watching me, probably worried that they'd lose a limb because I'm my hands are moving so damn fast. Okay, so I'm just putting highlights down. Okay. Let's see, maybe a little top of the head here. Okay. 
still kind of want that cartoon character look a little bit. Let's see, where is my basic skin tone? Here we go. I'm just going to put a drop outside the mix here. Slow down my breathing. Okay, one more thing to do on his, go back to that white. And just hit it around the highlights. Okay, put him aside. Okay, so here's, <laughs> I'm going to see if my experiment is a success <laughs> or an utter failure with his flesh. I am right now looking in my colors contrast paints. Now, contrast paints pride themselves on this is snake bite leather. This is a nice browner color. Um, that might be too dark. Pride themselves on this one coat thing and all that sort of stuff. So what I've done is I've definitely created highlights already by my pre-shading. So my thought is to use the contrast paint over that flesh. I am thinning it down. Okay. So let's see what this looks like. Putting it over the hand first. Okay. Put it on the shoes. Why not? It's there. I've also started using contrast paints as glazes, the shading. However, before I make that transition to the face, I'm going to add, I'm going to thin this down, make more of a glaze. Because this could go really good, this could go really bad. Okay, here we go, kids. You see it first live, I could really screw this up. So we'll see. Nope. Exactly what I thought would happen. Look at that. That is beautiful. That is exactly what I thought would happen. The contrast paint went over that flesh. All that highlight work that I've done. And acted as a glaze. Capturing all of that. The cheekbones. Right now what I'm trying to do is take out paint.
perfect. Can that brown be darker? Yeah, it could be. Um, but what I want to do is kind of see a layer approach with this, since this is the first time I'm doing this, especially live. I don't want to waste a lot of my time and screw up a nice looking figure. Okay, so we're done. Back of the ear. Okay. Wow. Yeah, it could definitely be darker, and it will be, because I'm going to be using some browns and blues for glazings. So now we're going to be moving on to the final stages, and my favorite part uh, of the figure painting is the, the, the shading. So I'm going to put you on mute and use my hair dryer. Now, I used the hair dryer and dried his face, well, and the rest of the figure, of course. And I can see I want to add some more glaze. So that's all I'll do. And any of that coffee staining effect, I'm just taking my brush, dipping it in water, and just kind of pushing the paint. Yeah, that's awesome. Okay, um, now, now to move on to the final stages of my shading. I'm going to remove this. another plastic container here. This is really quick. This is a very easy way to do this. I first start with a basically an Agrax Earthshade glaze over the entire figure. And for this I'm just going to use Army Painter Strong Tone. It's the same thing as Agrax Earthshade. Put there. And now I'm going to dilute it. Because this is just a, this is just like a filter. This is what it's doing is creating an even platform of brown. I'm gonna show you how you know he's still drying a little bit. So so put it around his, his sneakers on his hair. Not really his face, not for this. Put it on his shirt, maybe his hands. So what I'm doing is toning this down a little bit. Sorry if I'm off camera. So I'm creating a uniform effect of a, you know just right there. Kind of like I ex used the example of when we were kids and bananas had that red cellophane wrapped around it, and you'd take it, you know, take it home, and then you play with the cellophane. You look through it, and everything was red. That's what this is doing. It's just creating that filter effect. Okay. So here we go. I'm turban. And it's toning everything down right away. right away okay great okay gotta put the hair dryer back on dry these guys off real quick
Okay. So now, the last two stages for this demonstration. I've got Army Painter Blue Tone and Dark Tone. Somewhere around here. I highly recommend these Army Painter shades. Blue Tone. What I'll do is... I like using blue for shading. It makes your dark, dark, dark colors even more interesting than just using black, in my opinion. Here. Okay, so we got dark tone here, and then we've got, I'm sorry, blue tone here, dark tone. So, now, I'm going to look at the figure and see where is the darkest areas, where is the shading needed the most. Now, this is where you'll see the blue tone works especially well with khakis. So, I'm literally just putting it, kind of slowing down, put it right there under the neck and if I had more time I would do some more pin washing but I don't have the time right now my wife has been very patient with me okay so I'll get that blue creating that shadow you know where the shadow is you know back here under the arms we're just putting it there back here in the chest creating shadow not having to worry about wet blending, darker colors, and all that sort of stuff. Not for this. I didn't do his gem. I forgot. I need to take a look to see what color that gem is, but I can't remember. Okay, this area is dark, 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 so I need to apply more dark to it. Dark, 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 under his arm, dark, dark, dark. Okay, now on to the last one. Yep, I'm going to add dark blue on that turtleneck, which actually turned out really well in my opinion. With the highlighting and shading. I'm adding that blue to the hair, creating shades there. Sorry if that's off camera. Okay, going to the what they considered the known oil of uh, Army Painter. So, especially with this dark tone, to accentuate the shades of this black turtleneck, I'm just putting that dark tone right into that shades. Okay. 
I'm gonna put you on mute. Okay, looking at the time, in under an hour and 40 minutes, I was able to paint these two figures. And this, to me, is a very good um, quality painting. Uh, it, to me, it's several layers of or, uh, a tabletop painting. It's perfect for me. It's, it's exactly what I want. I want to be able to see some highlights. I want to be able to see some shades. Uh, the faces are very important to me. I'm very happy with how his face went. If I had some more time, I would probably add some more highlights to the cheek. But I am, of all the things, I am very happy with the experiment that I did with using contrast paints as a shade over highlights that I've already achieved. I could go a little bit darker brown, but I don't. I don't. For me, it's fine. It's perfect. Now I can see. After the video, I'm going to come back with uh, that, quote, white color and add some more highlights. But look at the shading. Look at the change in tones. Very easily done. I hope this helped you guys. I hope you enjoyed watching Saturday Morning Cartoons. Uh, if you're interested in this set of figures... He's up next. And I had started him in a demonstration, but I need to change him up and paint him a little bit better. And then the, the, the dog is around here somewhere. If you're interested in these figures, please send me a message. My name is Tim Spakowski. I'll be more than happy to get you a set. I hope you have a great weekend. I hope you have a great day painting and playing. And I hope this helps. Please leave any comments.